Okay, uh, it's good to see everyone. Uh, thank you, Bo, for presiding the worship. Uh, why don't we bless the people next to you? Um, bless them. You are absolutely a child of God. God is absolutely with you. Let's just enjoy that. Amen? It is very absolute, so let's just enjoy that. As we keep in mind the lessons that Jesus gave to us about the, this age. And this lesson is, uh, is the answer for our everyday life. Um, make sure have your time this week to read verse 14 through 27. Okay, uh, she's just giving a very important lessons to change you. You know, we talked about it last week how the transfiguration change cannot happen by our own power, right? So it's, so it's better off to be tired in a way. It's better off to be just stay low in a way. Just be, be as you are, okay? It's better off that way instead of like try to muster up the strength and let's go because that's not your strength, okay? So just stay where you are and go to the mount that Jesus is taking you to. So this week, why don't you meditate on this? It's just uh, very few verses. Uh, find some spiritual battle remnants um, to read the Word of God during the week. Amen? Fight the spiritual battle, okay? Don't try, to, uh, don't try to be energetic. I mean, if you are energetic, be energetic. But if you're not, don't try. That's what I'm saying. Don't try, but fight the spiritual battle. Because you have the name of Jesus Christ in you. You don't have to shout out loud. Because Jesus clearly said, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he said, you will drive out demons in my name, right? He didn't say, by your, I don't know, by your energy, right? He said, in my name. So you just need to hold on to his name because Mark chapter 3, verse 13 through 15 this is a very important message. Um, if you just uh, memorize this, uh, it will be a great source of faith to you. Uh, when Jesus called you, uh, Jesus didn't call anybody randomly. He wanted you. Specifically, he wanted you, and he called you. And when he called you, the first thing that he, um, he did, uh, the first purpose, the first purpose is to be with you. And when you really believe and enjoy that Jesus Christ is with you, you will see the people who are not with Jesus Christ, right? And that's when you can testify the gospel. So you don't have to event try to evangelize right away. Just enjoy and really recognize the with first, okay? Because that's when you will recognize the people who are not with Christ, okay? But before then, you cannot recognize... So some ways you might be envious of the people in the world, uh, but you will not be envious if you just, just little by little bit enjoy this. Okay, how can you enjoy this? In your scheduled prayer time, this week, in your scheduled prayer time, you know, I don't, I don't want to make, I don't want to, I mean, I could talk about the 393 covenant to you, you know what I mean? Do you know what the 393 covenant is? What is the first three? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but um, just to make it very simple, in your make some time, make a separate time this week. If you find yourself not being able to make that time, fight the spiritual battle. Okay, use the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, don't blame it on yourself because God does not blame blame it on you. 
God didn't blame on Adam and Eve. God actually gave a solution to Adam and Eve. Isn't that true? Right? Because God saw that it's Adam and Eve who sinned, right? But, but in, in God's eyes, God's eyes is very accurate. And in God's eyes, you know, it is not Adam and Eve who sin and who is always running from, from God. But it is actually the Satan, right? So God, broke, God gave the promise to crush the head of Satan. Which means God is getting rid of the, I don't know, the bully. Okay? The deceiver. The liar. That attack Adam and Eve. Same thing. God doesn't just for, forgive you like, oh, I forgive you because I love you. That's true. But what the, you, you really have to realize, if you want to really want to realize the gospel, you really have to realize that the cause, the cause is always Satan. Okay? The Satan is invisible, but God, can God see Satan? Yes? Can God see Satan? What is the problem that you have? The cause is Satan. God has an absolute plan over it, right? And you might be the one who is actually making the sin, right? Or you might be the one who is actually being the victim. But the cause is Satan. It's, it's not to... It's not to... Uh, it's not to make excuses, you know. Oh, Satan did it. No, Satan is alive and he is working. And that's the reason why that Jesus Christ came to destroy the devil's work. Amen? Satan is alive and he's working. That's the reason why that Jesus Christ came. Satan makes you confused. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse uh, 4, verse 4, it says, Satan is the god of this age, and he is bringing delusion. Okay? Like, you're listening to the message, but you're not really getting it. Satan is blocking the light of Christ. The light of the glory of Christ. Okay? So this Satan has to be bound first. That's why Matthew chapter 12, verse 28 and 29, Jesus said, how can you conquer a house if you don't bind the strong man in the house first? Guys, you should know, Satan, Satan is managing his own slaves, right? But Satan does not, Satan is not making plans to attack his own slaves because he doesn't have to make plans to attack his own slaves, right? But the ones that Satan is making plans, very strategies and uh, very schemes to attack and to deceive are Second Peter, First Peter, chapter five, verse seven through eight, is actually you and I, you and I. Okay, not to be afraid of Satan, but fight the spiritual battle first. Amen. Just close your mouth. Because Satan's another name is the devil. And the, the devil is what? The meaning of the devil is what? Divider. Satan brings divisions. Satan brings divisions to family, to couples, to children. Children and parents, relationship, friends, brings divisions. Pastors and uh, church members, pastors and elders, elders and elders, remnants and remnants. Teachers and remnants, Satan brings divisions. Why? Because that's what he's born to do. That's his name, divider, the devil. You understand? So fight the spiritual battle first and see what happens. Okay? When you come to worship, don't just be there. Satan, think about it. If, if, if you are Satan, wouldn't you attack you? <laughs> attack remnants? Right? Because the most important time, like you and I, we're meeting and we're standing before God's word, right? You guys are focusing very well, like, to listen to God's word. And this is the only time of the week that we gather and we try to listen to God's word and to find answers, right? Don't you think that Satan is working towards this time? 
So I'm not saying try hard not to be deceived. I'm not saying be a good Christian. I'm saying be as you are, but fight a spiritual battle. Okay? Not with your own might or power, but by his name. Because he called you to be with you and to testify the gospel and to drive out the demons, he says. So it is very important to rely on his name to pray, to believe in his name to pray. And the mystery of his name is upon who he is. Who is Christ? Christ is God. Amen? Satan and God, there is no match. And who is Christ? Christ is the one who came to destroy the, destroy the works of devil. And listen to this. He finished the work that he came to do. So that's who he is, and that's what he did, and then he's inside of you right now. Think about this, restore this fact, and then use the name. Otherwise, you're like, just like using a spell in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Satan be about no, no. <laughs> I don't normally do this, okay? Jabez, okay? Don't misunderstand. I'm doing this for the <laughs> remnants, okay? So that you guys can receive the message. So listen to this, okay? There are many things that happen to you already. Already. So, all you need to do is pray. All you need to do is listen. Because God is working and right, working right now, right? okay? So what happened already? And what is the content of prayer? I'm going to give you some Bible verses, okay? What happened already is that John chapter 19, 30 happened already. Jesus clearly said that it is finished, okay? He finished the work of setting you free from sin and curses if you believe in that and accept the Christ. So your life has no curses. Amen? What is the picture of success that you have? Throw away that picture of success because you've already received the success. Because Christ has finished the curses and disasters that even the rich and successful people that you call are receiving the disasters of addictions and mental problems and children's problems. Right? You know, people in Europe, I heard that I've never been to Europe, but they they got divorced like two, three, four, or five times. I know this Korean woman in Germany. Uh, she's pretty close to my mom, and it's her like third marriage. But people in Europe, they think that they have everything. You know, they have a great uh, mountains and the lakes, right? ocean and they, they think that they have everything but I see that they're in complete disaster not everyone of course but more and more we need to pray for them more and more they're becoming like animals eating partying doing drugs having relationship with mixed groups and But Christ in you clearly said that I have finished the curses and disasters for you. Amen? And remember that you are in Christ. 
John chapter 14, 16, and 17. The Spirit of God is in you and He's with you, okay? The world cannot know God, right? But listen to this. You can know Him if you pray and listen to Him. You can know Him because He lives in you and He's with you. That's why you are already, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, you are already the temple of God. So your body is very precious, okay? Your body, your action, your life has incomparable value, sorry to say, incomparable value to your friends, your non-believing friends, body and actions and life. So you should know how valuable you are. The Spirit of God, just the fact that the Spirit of God lives in you, and to, to extremely speaking, you have accepted the Spirit of God and Spirit of Christ, right? And then, let's say, I don't know, you sin every day. Like you, I don't know, you do bad things. <laughs> bad things every day until you die. Even if you do that, just for the fact that Spirit of God lives inside of you, you are the temple of God. And in the Old Testament time, temple is where God resides. So that's why they wash their hands and they wash their feet. Some people, they, the priests, they had to wash their entire body to go into the temple. Otherwise, they're going to be killed. Because that's where God is. But remember that you, <laughs> whether you believe it or not, and I, I believe, maybe you can sense it, right? I believe, and I hope that you believe, that you are the temple of God. Amen? Let's bless the people next to you. You are the temple of God. Okay? John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, You have already accepted Christ, which, which means, do you believe in Christ? Yeah, sometimes you are shaken. But do you believe that Jesus is the Christ? Do you believe that Christ is inside of you? Sometimes you shake. Sometimes you go low, right? Sometimes you love worldly things more. But do you believe that Christ, Jesus is the Christ and he's inside of you? That faith is not from yourself, it says. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9, is not from yourself. It's from God. So even if you and I are not perfect, you have received a very special gift from God. It's to believe in Christ who is invisible. You are believing in Christ, and not only you are just believing the invisible Christ, but you are, you are finding... <clears throat> You are finding the fact that he is king, prophet, and priest. You are finding that believable, right? Even if you have a complete faith. You know, some of, some of your kids, you know, I, I understand you might not have complete faith. But you have faith and that's why you're here, right? And what I'm saying is, even if your faith is small, that faith is not from yourself. It clearly says here, by grace, through faith, you have been saved, and it is not from yourselves, but it is the gift of God. It is not by your actions, so that no one can boast about their actions, but they can only boast about how God has given me grace to believe in Christ. Amen? So, your weaknesses are contents of boasting God's grace. So this happened to you already. So that's why all you need to do is pray now. Why do you have to pray? I talked about it here. I'm going to give you different verse, okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2, Satan is the ruler of the kingdom of the air. And this air can be very spiritual too, but I think air can symbolize uh, the flow, the culture. 
all the culture and the flow of this world, you know, idol worship culture in Europe, I talked about it, very self-centered, pleasure-centered culture, and all this flow, all, all this atmosphere, air, he is working right now. But God has given you, Luke chapter 10, verse 19, God has given you the authority. The moment that you accepted Christ, Jesus Christ is God, and the moment that you accepted Christ, you have been given the authority. So fight the spiritual battle first. Amen? Amen. Fight the spiritual battle that is working upon your finances, your families, Okay, because Satan knows what you are worrying about. Satan touches your worries. So that's why here, 1 Peter chapter 5, cast your worries. Cast, you know what cast is, right? Cast is like throwing really hard. Cast your worries upon the Lord. Amen? Amen. So let's bless the people next to you. Let's cast the worries upon our Lord. 모든 염려를 주께 맡깁시다. 한국말이 안 되네. 주께 맡깁시다. 맡깁시다. Right? <laughs> Luke chapter 10 verse 19. And at the end, you know what it says? Nothing will harm you. Even if you have financial problems, that's not going to kill you. Okay? Nothing, nothing will harm you. If you have to go back to Vietnam, just go back to Vietnam. And go back to Vietnam and save Vietnam. What's the matter? God is, God is sending you to Vietnam. So don't, don't have worries, you know, because you are in Christ and God is this God who created the world, who has planned your salvation. Listen to this. Who has planned your salvation before the world was created. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. For he chose us in Christ before the creation of the world. You cannot believe? Of course, because you're trying to understand God with your brain. Why are you trying to understand God with your brain? Faith does not come from understanding. Faith is a gift that God gives you. All the people in Europe and America, they judge everything according to their own understanding. Their brain is the judge for them. Their brain, their intelligence is the control tower. So it's very natural that they throw away the churches. But who has started that flow of intelligence center movement, Satan. But we can hardly fight, we can hardly find the Christians who have the authority fighting the spiritual battle. I pray that you will be the few people, you will be the remnants. Amen? You will be the remaining ones who are in the gospel, fight the spiritual battle. You know, some people argue that, uh, you know, even my parents, when they came into this uh, gospel of Jesus is the Christ, you know, they felt the same way. And some people argue that, uh, you know, why do you always talk about Satan and like fighting the spiritual battle, you know? Let's just kind of relax and just talk about just talk about the things, you know, of the loving things and like just relax, you know, and just enjoy the peace. Why do you always talk about Satan? Some people say. And I understand what they mean, you know, because there's a few people who have very severe past with uh, severe uh, spiritual problems. They kind of go overboard, you know. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the day. <laughs> there are few people who do that, but I also understand that they have to do that too. But let's think about it. If Satan is not bound, how can you find peace? 
with the given fact that Satan is working. So in, the, in other words, when Satan is bound, that's when you can find peace in the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God comes, and the first thing that it does is it crushes down the kingdom of Satan. So people who argue those things, I understand what they mean. You know, let's make the atmosphere, you know, whatever. So I totally agree. I want to listen to them. I want to follow their instructions. But remnants, when you go out to the real world, real world is really tough, isn't it? There is no, there is no guarantee that you're, you're going to find the... Uh, a boss who's filled by the Holy Spirit and filled with the gospel and can pray for you, you know? But in most cases, you're going to find a boss who is like, who is like schizophrenia or who has many problems, like, you know, very sensitive, right? Because your boss is being pressured by his or her boss. Kingdom of Satan. John chapter 10, verse 6, the king of this world. So, don't fight the spiritual battle like, oh my God, I have to fight the spiritual battle, otherwise I'm going to lose. No, fight the spiritual battle with this. John 16, 33. In the world, you're faced with many troubles, but do not be afraid because I have overcome the world already. I have, Jesus says, I have crushed the head of Satan already. I am the, the Lord. Satan is the king of the world, but I am the Lord of the universe. I'm the creator of the universe, and I have began the universe, and I will bring the end. I'm the beginning and the end. And this Christ is with you, and you can, Philippians chapter 3, verse 21, use his name. Maybe some of you remnants, uh, you guys are frustrated with your parents. You love your parents, but you don't like your parents. Uh, for some of you remnants, you, you show it to your parents when you're frustrated. But some of you, you cannot because your mom is very strong or your dad is very strict. So you cannot show it and you have to suppress it. Let's look at the fact. Okay? Just, I'm just, I'm just going to touch it. I shared this at the Youth Evangelism Institute yesterday. Let's look at the fact. Gospel is the only answer that can set us free, right? Because everyone is being pressured and everyone is being stressed. And it's because everyone has worries and disbelief. You know what I mean? Even if problems are there, if you have faith, then it doesn't matter, right? But your parents are not imprinted in the gospel. In their thoughts, the way that they live their lives, their values are not of the gospel. But some of your parents have listened to the gospel and maybe they are imprinted. But to tell the truth, I can hardly find any adult generation who is rooted in the gospel. When you're rooting in the gospel, you enjoy the gospel. That's why we see many adults who they don't even listen to the messages in their daily lives. Or when they listen to the message, they're like, fighting a battle, right? You know, I got to listen to the message, turn it on, right? But it's not like, 
listening to the message is a daily routine. It's not like listening and then praying is their enjoyment. Because the gospel that I have tasted is not only just valuable, but it is very addicted, addictive. Because the gospel takes you to God where you are created from. So gospel and Christ, when you enjoy it through prayer and the word and the message and the worship, when you truly enjoy it, you become your original state. So you are, you are having this sense of finding who you are. You have a very clear sense of who you are. Who you are meaning that I'm a human being, very clear sense about that, and how God led my life to restore the human being, the image of God, you know, to be saved from Satan and everything. So I'm a child of God, and next, next, after that, clear sense of identity is what? That I am a remnant. The generation, time schedule of generation. <laughs> Anyways, that happens, okay? Greatest enjoyment. Nature. So your parents, clearly, they didn't have time to be rooted in the gospel. But they're rooted in maybe money center, success center, you know. Got to have many friends or networks. They are rooted in that kind of uh, values or ideology for a longer time. You understand? So every day they have lived their life with something else than the gospel. So that something else is imprinted and rooted in their nature. So for you who want to enjoy the gospel and you want to communicate with your parents, like you expect your parents to like be, the, be the person of the gospel, right? That cannot happen. So your parents who do not have the imprint and nature of the gospel, does Satan know it or not? Does Satan know it or not? Satan's target is children of God. Satan does not attack his own slaves and children, okay? So Satan, Satan, the only pleasure for Satan is when children of God are moving according to his, his deceptions. But, so that's why Satan attacks everyone, adults, parents, and children, and everyone of children of, of, of God, but your, your, adult, your parents have more channels, more channels inside them that Satan can come in and deceive them. Satan cannot change their spirit because Christ is in them, right? But Satan can deceive them, clearly. So what I'm saying, remnants, if you have if you are more rooted in the gospel than your parents, you got to fight the Satan and the devil that is attacking your parents. Okay? Very simple. As you do the prayer to fight the spiritual battle for yourself, just do that for your parents too. That's when your parents will be restored. Okay? And the relationship between you and the parents will be restored. You know, I'm a pastor's kid, right? So my dad is a pastor. My mom is a pastor's wife. And they evangelized many people and they're missionary. And my pastor was the, the president of the America Pastors Association last year and all that, right? But... I still see, <laughs> I still see the wrong <laughs> self-centered, money-centered, and so at first I thought, you know, your parents, are your parents pastors? Anybody? Pastor's kid? Oh, okay, one teacher, or oh, two, yes, one remnant, okay. 
So most of you, your parents are not pastors and pastor's wife, right? But look, think about me. When my dad and mom, they're deceived by Satan and they do weird things, at first I was thinking, they're a pastor, but how can they do that? So you're in a better cases than me. Do you think I can teach my dad? Dad, come here, sit down. I'm going to proclaim the gospel to you. <laughs> but my dad received the gospel in the 40s, and then he was a pharmacist, and then he went to seminary at the late 40s. So before that, I kind of know how he lived his life. He has planned his life very precisely. Uh, <laughs> and he was putting into action. Do you think that plan is really from the gospel and is really for the gospel? Channel of Satan. That's why in my family, I can tell you, there's one problem that can't happens all the time. This one spe specific problem, it always happens. Repeatedly. And that is the very channel of Satan. And that is what my parents are holding on to. 우리 부모님이 복음 외에 가치로 딱 잡고 있는 그 부분에 사단이 계속 역사. But I understand. I began to understand. Do you know why? Because they have lived 30 and 40 years with that mindset. So it is kind of wrong. Factually, I'm, of course, emotionally, I'm frustrated, right? Because I have expectations. But factually, it is kind of wrong for me to put expectations on them. That's when I became set free. That's when I, that's when I realized that I'm younger, I'm immature, I'm less experienced than them, but God blessed me with a little bit more of the gospel than them. So God has blessed me as the position of watchman of prayer. God put me as the watchman of prayer in my family. And all I need to do is not to go overboard and do something tremendous, but just believe in the name of Christ and pray. Tell God about it. And especially the first thing that I need to do is what? Recognize, before you fight the spiritual battle remnants, do you think it's the Holy Spirit that is deceiving you? Holy Spirit that is blocking you? Think about it. Blocking you so that you will not enjoy the worship? That you will fall asleep during the worship time? Do you think it is the Holy Spirit? I told you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you like after one month. Pastor, why is this happening to me? I'm, I'm going to tell you after one month. I told you. I told you. Fight the spiritual battle first. Okay, it's understandable that you don't believe in Satan because you've never seen maybe demon-possessed people. I've seen demon-possessed people and sorcerers and all that. It's understandable, but do you think it is Holy Spirit? I cannot do anything more than this for you because I am not God and I'm not Christ <laughs> and I cannot go into your heart and I am a, I'm, I'm a pastor, you know, I'm the messenger that God is. So all I can do is give you, give you and deliver you a message. Whether you believe it or not, whether you think that you know it or not, if you're falling asleep during worship time, and if you're not able to listen, listen to the message, I'm not judging you. All I can do is pray for you and then give you a message. Because in God's perception, 
this is the only time that you can find the answer in your life. Do you think Satan knows that or not? So probably Satan is working very powerfully on Saturday night. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't say amen to that. Because Satan knows. So you could just go like this. Oh, God. I believe that Jesus Christ is me, so I use his name in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> you could just do that in that way. Satan, be bound. Until when are you going to expect for your parents and teachers to pray for you? Huh? Until when? And I'm not saying that it is the power of your prayer. You guys understand me? It is not your prayer power. It is the name of Christ that Satan is fearing. Amen? Your prayer does not have to be powerful. 기도가, 기도가 막 빡세게 안 나와도 된다니까요. It is the name of Christ. Okay? Guys, don't misunderstand. I'm not, I'm not like scolding you because of anything else. Okay? <sighs> 이 말까지 진짜 정죄한다고 오해하면 진짜 더 이상 할 말이 없어. 진짜 더 이상 할 말이 없어. 진짜 사단 얘기 안 하는 기존 교회 어, 신학교를 가야 됩니까? 제가. Why did Jesus heal demon possessed child? You know, people misunderstand because they have witnessed they have not witnessed the people 사람이 바뀌는 것을 체험을 못 했기 때문에 오해하는 거예요. They have never seen remnants changing. Remnants do not change when you love them. Loving them is a basic thing. You could love them, I don't know, 100% some some people, 50% I think 30% is good, right? 30? Because just, let's say Zerona is here. Just because I love Zerona 99%, <laughs> do you think Zerona's, Zerona's, just like anybody else, Zerona's wrong imprint root and nature will change? It is by the work of Holy Spirit, right? When the Holy Spirit starts to work upon her and more and more, you know, she restores, you know, everything, word, prayer, and everything, right? And she begins to taste it, the taste, the true taste of life, right? But what I'm saying is, in order for the Holy Spirit to work, the strong man has to be bound first. Light is, the sun is shining all the time. The clouds have to be gone first for the sun to shine strongly upon Zerona. And teachers and me, I'm just giving an example, are praying for Zerona, of course. But salvation, even for salvation, it's a one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? Just because your parents are Christian, that doesn't mean you're a child of God. So when you have the one-on-one -on -one relationship kind of prayer, even with Satan? With what? I told you. Not just his name. With the faith in this. It could be a small faith. 그냥 그리스도 이름이 아니고요. 진짜입니다. 여러분, 믿음이 없이는 하나님을 기쁘시게 할수 없다 했어요. It is impossible to please God without faith. 기도가 하나님을 기쁘게 하는 게 아니에요. Faith. The prayer that the, includes the faith, the right content, who he is, and what he finished already. Amen? So examine this.
how much? Okay? How much do you know about this? How clearly do you know about this? And you have the Bible with you, right? That's when you have. You start to digging into the Bible and find your own word about this. <웃음> 여러분, 다 알려주길 바라는 사람은 세계복음 할수 없습니다. 세계복음은 절대 못 합니다. 뉴 목사님도 나를 따라오는 게 아니라 같이 가야 된다 했어요. 성경 읽으세요. Read the Bible. 여러분 그리스도와 그리스도가 끝났다라는 것에 대한 여러분의 말씀을 가지세요. 아멘. 가지세요. 어렵습니까? 여러분이 이거를 가지면 저는 사역을 다한 겁니다. 여러분이 이거를 안 가지면 저와 여러분의 관계가 진짜 막 베스트 프렌드라 해도 썩어 없어질 그냥 유괴 것이. 끝이에요. 이거 가지면 끝이에요. When you have the word about who Christ and how he finished the work, dig into it. Dig into it, okay? King, prophet, and priest, you know the meaning. But if you don't have the word about it, you don't know it. Okay? But if you, if you have the word about it, you dig into it. And when you dig into it, that's the moment that Holy Spirit will teach you. Because Holy Spirit is already happy, already pleased when you stand before God's word by yourself. Because God is the word. When you stand before God's word, you are standing before God. Dig into it. The three works and the seven blessings have the ten, the ten words of God about the gospel. Your own ten Bible verse. If you want to confirm whether it's accurate or not, confirm it with me. Because when you have God's word, you can pray. Because pray the content of prayer. Okay, okay, it's the prayer topics, but the content of prayer is actually God's word because prayer is actually holding on to God's promise, isn't it? Holding on to God's promise and telling God, God, you have promised this, so give it to me, right? So his promise is his word. And the most important promise of, in, in his word is Christ. So if you just have 10 promises, 10 Bible verses about Christ and the seven blessings, identity and authority as a child of God, <laughs> it's over. If prayer is not taking place, it's because you don't have the content of prayer. If you have the content, then just thinking about the 10 Bible verses, just thinking itself becomes prayer. So that's what Jesus said to the disciples. You have little faith. But do you know what Jesus said after that? A faith as, a, a, as small as a mustard seed will move the mountain. What does that mean? Even if it's very small faith, if it has life in it. Does your faith have life in it? Then it will grow to the point where you will believe that God can move the mountains when you pray. Your faith will grow. So Jesus is saying, examine if your faith has life in it, not just the information and knowledge. Your faith content is, content is already decided. Christ and the kingdom of God and the Holy Spirit, seven blessed, is already decided. But this is life to me. These 10 Bible verses that I have got from my own personal time. I don't have to yell, but what am I yelling, right? In my personal time. <laughs> I, I think I just really want you to have it, you know? 
In this personal time, this happened. John chapter 14, 26 happens. I talk about it all the time, right? The Holy Spirit knows your heart when you pray. If you're just praying like, oh, mom told me to pray, so I'm going to pray. Or do, if, you really, if you really want to enjoy who you are, do you want to be deceived all the time? Like you expect Monday to be deceived by Satan? Yay! I'm going to be deceived by Satan on Monday. huh? You want to leave that kind of expectation? On Tuesday, more, more deceptions. huh? <laughs> get, some, get some pride as a child of God. You know, we have Christ in us and Christ is God. It, is, it should be unimaginable for you to keep on thinking that you will be attacked by Satan. But to start from where you are, just humbly start from where you are, and go into your personal time of digging into who Christ is and what he has finished. That's when the Holy Spirit will teach you. And that teaching of the Holy Spirit is life. It's not information and it's not knowledge. <clears throat> so Jesus is kind of uh, mocking them and kind of, a, what is it, uh, scolding them. But at the same time, Jesus is giving them hope. Hey, your faith can be small. The size does not matter. If you have the life, your faith will grow. So think about it. If you just have the attitude of, okay, the pastor will tell me, you know, he, why doesn't he teach me? If you just have that kind of attitude, chances are that you're just going to have information, right? Chances are that. Of course, that can happen on worship. If you want life in, your, in the gospel that you have, then come to worship not to look at people, not to show your clothes to people, not to have a great image and leave a great image about yourself in this relationship and networking in, in the church, but come to worship solely because you want to stand before God, not to look for the people to rely on who can help you, who can be your guide, but just to solely look to God and receive the answer that God gives you, even if it's a new people or new, new things, new answers. Church is not a place to meet people and work. So, biblically speaking, we should not work on Sunday. We should give a sacrifice. What does that mean? Enjoy the blood of Christ and then give worship together. Receiving the strength and the answer and the peace that comes from God. So that's when Jesus gave a very important lesson to the disciples. He talked about the cross and the resurrection. But the disciples have other interest. Do you know why God is giving you problems? So that you can have the interest to know Christ. Do you know why? God knows that this is the way for you. To live the life of to live the life of finished work of Christ. To live the life of Seeing everything not as problems. Lead the, live the life of receiving strength from God in this personal time and the teachings from God and then save others. So God is giving you necessary problems. Necessary. The problems that you can handle. Why? Because your interest was, was somewhere else. But that other interest that you have does not match with who you are. 
you and I, you and I are the most safe when we are in the flow of God's word. You and I are the most happiest people when we receive the working of the Holy Spirit, the teaching of the Holy Spirit. You and I feel the most firm in, our, in, on, in the states of our mind and the body and the spirit when we see everything with the eyes of the gospel and see how that's not a problem. That's not a problem. That's the path that God is giving me. That is the message that God is giving me to, the, to restore the gospel and to go to the next time schedule. Not to stay as you rely on people who have money, people who can help you, but to go to the next time schedule, meaning he's telling you to get ready. Get ready. So problems are signs. But people who do not have this gospel by the word, then they don't have the gospel. Then if you don't have the gospel, your prayer is not, your prayer is just prayer. But if you pray with the gospel, then God always opens the spiritual eyes to you to sense and see that this is the time schedule. What kind of time schedule? And why is the time schedule? What is God's plan? We can never figure out God's plan with our brain. Yes? Isn't that true? Then through what? When you are spiritually connected with him. How can you be spiritually connected with him? God is the word. And the word is God. And you want to do it, but it doesn't really happen. Right? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday just passes really quickly. Understand. Fight the spiritual battle. When I was in high school in, in L.A., I was just a Korean Asian guy, right? <laughs> they call me Chino, meaning Chinese. They call me Jackie Chang. Jackie Chang, I'm not Jackie Chang, I'm David Chang, right? But they call me Jackie Chang. But I remember, I have the memory of my high school days where I was the most confident self, what is it, spiritual pride and evangelism taking place. Because I, because, not because my, pa my parents is a pastor. My parents back then were afflicted the most. <laughs> they cried every day. Because the immigrant life in America was so miserable that they cried every day. We had family worship every night. And that was the necessary suffering for them to understand the field of America. So do you think my parents really prayed for me in high school years? When I come back from school, I realized that I was alone. So don't rely on your parents, remnants. You give some space for God to come into you. I was alone, and I could not live a day without God giving me strength. Because I, I was basically a mute, you understand? I didn't speak the language. I was, I was basically mute. When I opened my mouth, they thought I was stupid or something. Um, 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 where is... Um <laughs> oh, i got to end the message. <laughs> so that's when God gave me the word. David, you are a child of God. You're the only light. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. You are the light in University High School. Jesus talked about tax. Taxes being paid to Roman Empire. Right? So disciples were hesitating. But Jesus said, don't, don't make them feel offended. Just pay the tax. Remnants, receive 
the economy of light that God has for you. And don't try to be a don't try don't be a small vessel try to look for the ways not to pay the taxes. You understand? Pay full taxes. Because that's not really important. So this week, really have your personal time to have your word about the gospel. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you have spoken to us. I pray that you will your word to be fulfilled in the lives of the remnants. Um, so that they can really experience the power of the word and the power of prayer, that it is enough and complete, and we don't need anything else because Christ has given us everything already. Help them to figure out what that everything is in the word this week, in their personal time with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for the precious word. Let's give offering to God as we praise. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God.